I have a great guest today. I'm so excited. Uh, he's actually waiting for his pizza to arrive. So any moment, <laughs> the bell's going to ring and he's going to get his pizza, okay? <laughs> Uh, so it, I, I love this guy. I met him in Vegas a long time ago. He's hilarious. He was on Last Comic Standing, and here he is today to talk about love and relationships. So here you are, Rocky. How are you? Good, Grace. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. good see, I ordered my pizza an hour and a half ago, so it you know, should be coming here any minute. I know, of course, during the, the stream, but that's okay. We'll make it part of it. Are you going to eat the pizza during the stream? Whatever you want, Grace. <laughs> Whatever. Okay. Okay. All right. Good. I like that attitude. <laughs> we'll roll with it. <laughs> we're rolling. So um, we're going to talk about relationships, and I would love to know about your love life because um, you were married before, and I'm always interested in knowing about how that turns out for people. Um, well, you know what's so weird? I was married for 18 years, and then I've been a Divorce exactly 18 years. Oh. So I feel like I have the equal amount of, uh, you know, experience and having no idea what the hell's going on. <laughs> I have 36 <laughs> years of, <laughs> no, I know nothing still after all this time. And I'm still afraid of my ex wife <laughs> after oh, all these stop years. It. Why? What does she do? Just scare uh, me. Just a little, you know. Is she tough? I think all men are afraid. You know, when women start yelling, I don't know. I don't think guys like, uh, you know. I think that's why my grandparents got along so well because I think they were both hard of hearing. <laughs> like they never heard <laughs> what the other one was. <laughs> that's probably why they were married so long. <laughs> so your parents, were they married for a long time? And yeah. how yeah. was their relationship? How was, you know, your role models, basically, how was that? Well, you know, it's so funny. Uh, I remember one time, this is true. I was maybe like in fourth or fifth grade and I'm sitting at the table and I'm eating cereal, you know, and my dad's sitting at the other end reading the newspaper and my mother's yelling for about 20 minutes straight. She's just yelling. So about after about 20 minutes, my dad puts the paper down and he goes, are you talking to me? Like, he had, <laughs> like, I, I think he thought she, my mom was yelling at me, but he, she was yelling at him, but he just tuned her out, you know? Hilarious. Like, oh, yeah. That's how it works. That, I think, man, do you, did you tune your ex out? or uh, Sometimes. When they start going, 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 you know, if, like, if you slow down and, you know, let me, my peanut brain digest the words, like I'll go <laughs> yeah. with you. But once it's like, blah, 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 I think, I don't know. But I'm not saying that. I'm saying it more against me. Like, I'm, you know. Well, I think maybe they overwhelm you. It's almost like a, a speeding train. And you're like, wait, what? You know, yeah. me understand yeah. what you're mad about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. That's how the I Women feel. scare you, basically. Yes, pretty much. We scare you. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. But I mean, like, everybody loves being in love. But it's like... It's like walking on the end of the Grand Canyon. It's beautiful, but at any minute you can fall to your death. <laughs> you know what I mean? Same for women, you know, it's the same thing. I, I'm always scared to like someone for real because it's like, yeah. oh, yeah, chances. It's a big jump, hard. right? It's a big jump. That's right. But it's kind of fun when you're jumping. Then when you hit the ground, not so fun. Yeah. yeah. I know. Yeah. The trick is to stay in the air, <laughs> right? All right. <laughs> Very cute. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's all there is to love. So tell me about your dating life. So, so have you ever been on a blind date ever? Yeah, only one or two. And they were, you know, you ever been on a blind date so bad you like had to play dead to get out of it? That ever happened to you, Grace? No, never. <laughs> <laughs> Tell more. <laughs> I remember one time I'm sitting in a car with this girl and it couldn't have went worse. Like it was just awful. It was nothing. And I, I heard a gunshot and I'm like, Oh, here's my big chance. So uh, <laughs> I slump over the wheel <laughs> you know, I'm laying there. Like I got shot. So uh, she took my wallet. So there's nothing I could do about that. I was, I was dead. Technically. <laughs> so, uh, oh, that's hilarious. Yeah. I don't know. It's just well, like, Sounds pretty crazy, but what I want to know what's the craziest thing that ever happened on a date? Uh, hmm. I had a girl one time ask, you know, we were only dating a few months, 
and she wanted to know if she could get an insurance policy on me. <laughs> no, no, wait, wait, what? Not, yeah, like, not like, you know, we weren't talking about getting married or nothing like that. And, and she goes, you can get one on me, too. I'm, I'm like, are you, you going to cut my brake line? Like, what's uh, <laughs> what's going on here? <laughs> like, are you going to you push me off a cliff? Like, I just, I don't know. I thought that was unusual. That is weird. That's a little bit, um, yeah, uh, murder suspect right yeah, there. Murder. Yeah. yeah, that's oh, right. Right when you think you're going to get murdered. <laughs> I know. I would sleep with my eyes open, you know, if I was with that person. Yeah. Did you, what you about ever, you? What about you, uh, Grace? You ever, like, what was your weird date? You ever have a crazy date? date was with a Marine who started, he got drunk and started telling me, like, secrets, state secrets. I Or maybe there were bullshit, but I don't know. So just in case, when he went to the bathroom, I ran out with heels to my car and left. And said, wow. oh, my friend Matt called me. He needs to go to the hospital with some bullshit. I, I shouldn't even have texted him, but I did because I'm a nice person. Wow. Him. Yeah. He, I wanted, might... he wanted to kill you because you had all these state secrets now that he it told you. Me. I know. I know. And I was looking back, like running you know, to my car. Yeah, it was a little scary. He was parked next to me. So I was praying like he didn't catch on that I left. Wow. Holy yeah. cow. Yeah, I know. Super fun. Dating is dangerous. It can be dangerous. Have you ever slept in the same bed with someone <laughs> who you were afraid of? Like they were, you know, going to snap? My wife for 18 years. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, like, yeah, you sleep with like one eye open, you know? Yeah. Oh, my God. She sounds hardcore. No, we're okay now. Like we're good friends, you know, but... uh I don't know. It was just rough in the beginning, you know, but she's a good, I don't want to, I don't want to bag on her, you know, but she was, she's a good kid. She's good. She's a good yeah. kid. Yeah. 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 Well, you have kids too, right? Yeah. I got four kids and 11 grandkids. So, Wait, what? 11 grandkids? Yeah. My kids, uh, they like the sex, I guess. Great. <laughs> <thing. laughs> <laughs> Big thing in their house. I guess <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So how, how's your relationship with your kids? Oh, I love them all. They're all good kids. They're all unique in their own way. And one time they even let me, uh, I took two of my grandkids to the Museum of Science and Industry, you know? Yeah. And this, this joint was packed and it was on a day. You never, don't take kids on a day where there's no school because the whole school's there. You know what I mean? Like when there's a day off school. Yeah. So I tell them, they're like, they're probably like four and five at the time, four and six. And I go, guys, stay close so I don't lose, you know? Because, I mean, it was mob. Like, if one of them took off, we, we would have never found them, you know? Right. Literally, right when I said that, they both took off in opposite directions. Yeah. And I'm like, so then now, I know you're not supposed to think like this, but, uh, you know, then you got to go, man, like, I got I to gotta chase the one with the most potential. You know what I mean? Like, what do I do? So, uh, in my mind, I go, I'm going to chase the skinny one because he's faster. And so we can catch up to the chubby one because he was probably like water. I knew he was probably going to be by the food court. <laughs> so, uh, so you knew where he was going to be. So the skinny one was a problem. You didn't know where he was heading to. Yeah. Thank God the stars aligned. You know what I mean? I got the, I got the skinny one and I grabbed him and then we caught up with the chubby one and like, how do you come home with one kid? You know what I mean? You go, ah. Oh, <laughs> well, your wife would not have been happy at all. Yeah. Yeah. So but it worked out good. I, I returned with two of them. Good. So, good job. Yeah. You're a good yeah, dad. Thank you. That's, that's the definition of a good dad. They return with all the kids. Yeah. Right. That's uh, I should get something for that. Right. Like definitely star or ice cream cone or something. <laughs> That's that's a big big thing. And how about your grandkids? What's how's your relationship with your grandkids? All eleven of them. Yeah, they're good, man. I love them all, and you know, sometimes they they're like grandpa. I'm like guys, call me Uncle Rock. How am I gonna get laid with this grandpa stuff? You know. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think it uh, puts a damper on your dating life when they call you grandpa? <laughs> I think women think it's cute, but it's like just let's go with Uncle Rock, okay? Yeah. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> no, the other thing, uh, you know, I just, I never liked arguing, you know, like that wasn't a thing or, 
you know, and my ex, she would like, you know, like correct me all the time. And that was oh. like, you know, yeah, that gets annoying, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah, like every day, you know, and then, you know, finally, you know, I'm like, I go, Lisa, I go, quit correcting me, you know, and she's like, uh, my name's Sheila, you know, <laughs> but uh, it was stuff like that every day, you know, it's like. Yeah, details, I mean, yeah. you feel, right? We went to a psychic one time. Yeah. There was other stuff like she didn't want to hear. So she gets in an argument with a guy, like who argues with a psychic, first of all. And then he goes, you know, when she's walking out, he goes, uh, he goes, your wife's crazy. And I'm like, this guy's good. So, <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't tell him nothing, Grace. He knew. He, he, he knew. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about, um, like, jokes about dating. Okay. I'm interested to know if, have you, after the Me Too movement, did you have to change some of the jokes about, you know, dating and relationships? Yeah. You know what's so weird? Like, there's jokes that, they're just jokes. Like, that's why they call it a punchline. Like, somebody's getting punched at the end of this joke, whether it's you or your teacher or your father. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, yes. I don't I don't know many comics that go, I'm going to write a joke to hurt someone intentionally. Like, it's yes. just, it's just a joke is all it is, you know? And, uh. Yeah, I remember like starting out, there was a couple jokes I did that now they go, oh, that's awful, that's sexist. But it's just showing like how stupid I am. You know what I mean? Like I go, right. I used to do a joke, I go, folks, compromise in a relationship is everything. Like it's all about compromise, you know? I go, uh, like my wife said to me, she goes, hey, she goes, if you think I'm going to have sex with you and then get up and make a sandwich, she goes, you're crazy. And I go, what if I just want a sandwich? <laughs> I go right there. I compromised. <laughs> so, <laughs> but but the, that's kind of funny, right? Yeah, because you're yeah, because you're making fun of yourself. Really, that's the whole thing. I don't understand why people yeah. are taking on. You're not making fun of. Well, you're making fun of her a little bit, but more on you. But the joke is really on you. Yeah, you know, I remember I dated this one girl from the South, and I didn't know what the hell, her birthday was coming up, and she just kept saying, well, just remember, I'm from the South, just remember, I'm from the South, and I'm like, what the hell does that mean? I didn't like, uh, you know, like, she was telling me just to get her, like, a gift, so I, so I ended up, I bought her a chicken, like, I don't know, I thought they have chickens in her yard down there, I didn't know what to get her, <laughs> like, you're killing me, you know, but you know, you know what I think, too, Grace, like, um, Everybody today looks at what we're supposed to be offended at, you know, like they go, oh, I'm offended at this. And you said that, like, isn't the whole thing in life, like, like, aren't we supposed to find what makes us happy? Like, not what, like, like, instead of waking up going, well, that offends me, or I don't like this, or I don't like that. Shouldn't we be going, hey, what, what makes me happy? Like, maybe I should focus on that. Like, what? Like, what, what's a good thing to do? What's a happy thing to do instead of going, you know, today I'm going to look at, see who's insulting me or I think that says the wrong word. Or it's like, man, there's so much more to it. You know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah, absolutely. You have to, to be positive. If you're offended, I mean, we could pick on being offended about so many things. Yeah. You know, somebody makes a joke. Sometimes people, there's a difference between being funny and being mean. Yeah. There's Fine line. So whenever you cross the line to be mean, somebody the other day messaged me something and it was just mean. It wasn't funny. So I called him out on it. I'm like, this is not funny. It's just mean. So yeah. what's your point? You know, I, what are you trying to do? So in that case, I wasn't even offended, but I thought it was stupid. Why would you write something mean? What's the point? Yeah. Uh, I agree. You got to be kind to each other. And a, and a joke is a joke. You know what I mean? It ain't meant to be, you know, hurt anybody. I don't think, you know, people do jokes about their boyfriends, their husbands, their ex-wives. That's all they are is jokes, you know? That's right. Yeah. But yeah. It's comedy gold, right? You just go through pain and then it's like, uh, I'll make this into a bit and it's going to be really yeah. good. Yeah. It's better like writing a bit than like trying to give your ex-boyfriend, get him to drink antifreeze. You know what I'm saying? Like. <laughs> <laughs> that is so true because it is comedy revenge. Yeah, and you get it out on stage, right? It's like therapeutic. You get it out. Yeah. What and people agree doing. with you. It's it's delicious to me. It's like, oh yeah, I got that. Yes, yes. Now I feel better. No yeah, you need it. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah and my people still not here, Grace. You believe that? 
<laughs> okay, for those who just tuned in, Rocky ordered a pizza and we've been waiting for this pizza for how long? Two hours. <laughs> Yeah, so he's waiting for his pizza. But um, I, to be honest, I think uh, they got lost or they forgot about it, Rocky. Probably. So you're going to have to make yourself something. I have a feeling. I think. I made toast <laughs> the other day. That's good, right? Yeah. <laughs> I, know. I can make toast. <laughs> he's not like me. Cook is a four-letter word, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't <laughs> cook either. The kitchen is not my room, definitely. <laughs> no. You go, Rocky, would you do my podcast? You, you go, it's so easy. I go, Grace, I don't know what I'm doing. I go, I'm, you go, no, it's easy. You're going to love it. So I have an I, an iPad Pro. It, it was nice. It cost a lot of money. It broke earlier in the week. I had my friend fix it. So then Grace, no, she goes, I'm a, I'm a uh, computer, computer nerd. <laughs> computer nerd. I've Stop got this. It. Just listen to me. We literally worked on it for like a half hour. We couldn't get it running, right? <laughs> and then I went and got another tablet. Uh -huh. That don't work. And now I'm on a phone and then we're getting calls from pizza places. So Hilarious. Red. Oh my God, Rocky. That's that's why you need to get a laptop. I told you. Then there's no calls, nothing. You don't have to worry. Oh you my told God. I'm with my iPad. <laughs> <laughs> you told me I'd be okay with the iPad. Nobody said I was a good computer nerd. <laughs> <laughs> I did not put an adjective in front of it, okay? okay. <laughs> Self-proclaimed, so you know how that, what that means. Okay. Oh, my God. Um, so I want, I really want your most outrageous story in general, like on anything in your life. What is the most outrageous thing you ever went through? Well, one time I was working in um, Columbus, Ohio, and it was with, do you remember Brett Butler? Yes, of course. She was on that show, Grace Under Fire. It was right before she got real big, you know. And um, me and her were sitting out there after a show, and it was a movie theater over there. And these two kids were, uh, they were waiting for their parents to pick them up, you know, yeah. from the theater. And they were little, they're probably like eight or nine years old, little skinny kids, you know. And this guy comes, this is back when there was pay phones. This, this kid was on the pay phone calling his parents. So this guy comes over, big kind of hippie guy, you know, he looked all, you know, discombobulated. So him and the kids start arguing. And the kid comes over by me and he goes, hey, mister, you know, like, we keep an eye on me? That guy's weird. And, you know, I'm just waiting for my parents. And me and Brett are sitting around the bench. And I go, yeah. So the kid and his buddy are sitting by this fountain. There was a fountain in front of the club. Yeah. Well, I don't know what was said, but... In a minute, they're probably like 15 feet away. In a matter of seconds, this guy, he just grabs this little boy, that eight or nine years old. He had him underwater by his neck. He had this kid underwater. Like it just unfolded that fast in front of my oh eyes. Oh, my God. And I remember running over there and grabbing, like, I grabbed the guy. Uh, I grabbed the kid out of the water and then I grabbed the guy by the back of his head and I put him in the water. Like, how do you like it? You know? Nice. And then um, Brett came over there and grabbed the kid. And then I was on this guy's back and he got up and I had him in, you know, you know, whatever this is called. What is this like when you're behind somebody? You know, I'm not an expert at it. That's my disclaimer. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. You don't know, you know when you're on somebody's back and you got them in a lock like that, like you got oh, the yeah, headlock. Yeah, 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 a headlock. Is that a head? No, a headlock's like this. I had him from behind, like in an arm lock. Like I had his arms. Oh, like this. Yeah, and with my hands behind his neck. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, gotcha. Yeah. You took what? Crab? What is it? Crab Maga. Crab Maga. That's Krav street fighting. Yes. Oh, okay. I had three years of uh, Chinese takeout. I don't know if that matters. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so anyway, this guy, we can't keep him down. Like we're like hitting him, and and then we find out later he's on PCP, and this guy was like an animal. And my brother, that's a cop, mm -hmm. he said you could shoot people on PCP, and they they don't feel it. Like they just keep coming. Like they're not. Oh, I saw that. Yeah, I saw that thing, a documentary on that. Yeah, like it so. Was, me yeah. and Brett, we're like we're trying to and then the dave stroop the owner of the he was the manager of the funny bone at that time and he called the cops and the cops came 
and they charged him with attempted murder. And yeah. the cops knew this kid would have been dead, literally. Ugh. And these the cops knew this guy like he was a frequent flyer, you know, like he, you know. So, you know, I'm I'm not saying like all, like I'm a hero or I did anything. I think it's something anybody would have done at that time. And thank God we were there because right. you wouldn't have had a little, little kid would have been like mm. not on the earth, you know. But, um, yeah, that's probably the weirdest, craziest wow. uh, thing that happened. And Brett was right there, man. Like she she jumped right in, man, like a, wow. like a guy. She just jumped right in and. You know, we're beating the hell out of the sky for all we're worth. Good. Yeah, thank God the cops came because he, you know, this guy wasn't staying down long, you know. Yeah. I, but I other think than that, but you know what? I, I had a good run, man. I got to meet the Rolling Stones and, you know, Brett Farr from the Packers. And um, I, got to, I got to see Aaron Neville from the Neville Brothers. He sang Ave Marie. It was like the most beautiful thing. It was like hearing an angel sing, you know. That's like amazing. We, we're blessed. Like we got to see and do a lot of things in our life, you know? Yeah, you do. And what is your uh, favorite story about a celebrity? Like you're hanging out with a celebrity and being on your podcast. <laughs> Check. <laughs> do I get a free pizza? <laughs> No, I never any pizza at this moment. <laughs> I probably, if I flew there to Chicago, I probably would have been there before. I the think pizza. so. Yeah. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> I definitely could deliver a pizza to you. Not a problem. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Oh, my gosh. Uh, so let's see what we can close on. I would love to close on any advice that you have. Uh, regarding relationships and love. What is your advice or your wisdom on it? Order pizzas early. <laughs> so they're there. The you want to eat. Work out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. I think just um, be kind to each other and be open with each other. And uh, you, know what, you know what I think? I think a lot of people have fears. Uh, everybody has a fear of something. And... Um, I think they wait until the time comes to let it out instead of going, Hey, like, you know, if you talk to someone in advance, but this bothers me a little bit. And then, if right. you, well, that bothers me. You know, I think if you get it out of the way, like early on, maybe, you know, you know what I mean? So you don't push that per person's buttons or you don't, you know, want to hurt them or, you know, but don't you think as we, get older like you grow right like you go right you know like you let yeah. go of little petty stuff and, and you, you want and you know what you want like i find i i know what i want i've always kind of been like that but now i'm like more straightforward it's like this is you know what i want and what do you want and let's make this work and if you have a problem or an issue with something i do please call me out on it and in a kind loving way yeah. and then we'll figure it out we'll talk. And if, We'll talk. And it's like, I think when you say something to people, they get defensive right away. Like right. they're being attacked and then they, yeah. you know. Yeah. We all tend to do that. But I think the best to me, the best way is to step back when I have like a strong emotion, like anger or whatever. Instead of reacting, I just pull back. I don't engage. And I'm like, I'll be right back. Let me think about this. Let <laughs> me be right back. Like in a month. <laughs> yeah, like for about 10 years. <laughs> yeah, you think about this. <laughs> but I think that not reacting is the smartest thing to do. And when you're younger, I think we you have more passion and emotion, and so you react more. When you get older, you're a little more tired. So. <laughs> yeah. You get wisdom, too, right? You gain yeah. wisdom. Yeah, you know what's up. So it's like, that's not even worth arguing about, so let's just drop that, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so basically yeah. what you're saying, communication. That's that's yeah. the thing. That's the key. What did your mom want you to be when you were young, Grace? <laughs> well, actually, <laughs> oh, I told you that right now. <laughs> well, my mom thought I would make a great hooker. <laughs> True. I was kidding. I didn't know. I didn't think you were going to say it. Yeah, she said because I was 20. I was like, I don't know if I should continue with college or what to do. I'm not sure. And she was like, you know what? I think you would make a great hooker. 
<laughs> it's just like, yeah, oh my God. Like a lot of fun. Men like you and you have a lot of stamina. I'm not kidding. My mother. Wow. A hooker. That's so weird. My, my mother wanted me to be a pimp. Check. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> and you're so much fun. I love having you. And you're like my public secret crush, right? You too, Grace. Thank you, honey. Oh, thank Let's you. Let's do this again, huh? Yeah, totally. Let's do it. This is fun. Okay. And okay. next time I'll have my pizza first, and then we'll do the. <laughs> Get your shit together, Rocky, please. Absolutely, Grace. Thank you for having me on. And I love you, my friend. And you be safe out there. You hear me? You too. I love you too, Rocky. Thank you. I'll see you next trip. You got it. Yes, right. totally. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Bye, Grace. Bye.